All right, on our adventure tonight, we're gonna need a little bit of luck. So let's go ahead and roll for some luck. I will start by rolling for... So Brandon, you go first. Brandon, you tell us what character you're playing tonight and go ahead and roll a d4 and determine which luck token you will have tonight. Excellent. I am playing Somnolentus Brevis, a Dwarven Cult Initiate. All right, great. Three. Three, so you get the mighty bonfire pit. So, just as a reminder, you're gonna draw from a moment around a campfire, be it by yourself, with one of the characters here, or in the past. And you can add to the narrative as well, too, by drawing upon what your, your faction remembers, seeing as how this is a new character. But you're sort of tasked with recapping, but generally it's bringing forward what you recall at any bit, at, at, you know, since you played. Okay. And Errol, go next, and Nick, you'll roll last. Okay, Herman Roth is back, the little sneak thief. Everybody's favorite, who's still not dead yet. <laughs> Just waiting for the day. All right, so what do we got? Today's the day. We need a little two by four. One, so. Oh, no, either, because there's three left. Six. All right, so you get a little bit of hope. Uh, the, for the Herman future. Draw from hopeful for the future. Okay, okay. evens odds. Go for it, Nick. Evens. All right, you get the little token here. Miss Big, you're playing Miss Biggs today? I am. I am playing Miss Biggs, the, like, you know, shifty little halfling who has an eye for adventure and gold. An eye for adventure and gold. Okay, and Brandon, what do you recall from the last time you were here at the table? Tell us what you remember, what you're inspired by, what your faction goal might be here. Somnolentus Purvis is a member of the Volpe Sargentum who were formed out of the disbanded legions from the wars. Uh, they are looking to find their place in the world now that their military service is no longer required. Mm. And so on the day of the pink sun, you were all brought to the once thought inaccessible and inhibitable lands in which you found passage. A map was found, uh, a site was settled, and before you knew it, you were amongst the ruins of an ancient civilization that was, was you know, never thought to have existed before. And you guys have spent some time trying to claw out survival, looking for resources. Immediately, you found runes, and amongst those runes was our lovely Oris here. This strange device that allows us to look into realities, I guess, mechanically. It's gonna function like a, a, a hero token and allow you to reroll any die, and you can choose to accept the results of this or not. And it's been used some, several times now. Gems are lit up, gears are turning. It's a strange device, indeed. And last time we were engaged with the Lost Citadel, a Balsalt Fortress, near Arventa, the developing place that you guys have settled in, amongst the ruins of the, cl the cliffs and the crags of this land. And I believe tonight, you would like to venture forth into those ruins. Tell us more about that. What are you guys doing amongst the Arventa s s settlement? I'll go first, I guess. So, uh, Herman mm -hmm. is gung-ho and ready to go. He's uh, got all of his accoutrement. He's stocked up again. He did lose his dagger by chucking it at one of the, the beasts last time, so he's down. He's determined to get it? Uh, maybe, if he finds it, but he's, he doesn't have that. Sure. But otherwise, he's raring to go, and sure. um, he's kind of, you know, storming around the... Uh, you know, the center of the little village here, looking for uh, a pack to go and, you know, go and fight and, and clear this place out once and for all. And of course, the circle is always looking, the circle being Herman's faction, of course, uh, is always looking to get a little, get a little leg up, get a little, you know, foothold. <clears throat> and so, did you say the Volpix Argentis? Argentum, yes. Oh, Argentum, sorry. So yeah, they would be very interesting to Herman, and he would love to get to know them better, because as a kind of, you know, pseudo-governmental organization, 
they need people to, uh, you know, enforce any eventual laws or, you know, order that might need to be maintained. Excellent. Uh, and Somnolentis is all about this uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, the Volpes are essentially a mercenary organization at this point. Uh, again, looking for steady work, uh, as is Somnolentis, because he is quite light of coin at the moment. And so any excuse to go out and find some treasure and you know, perhaps. So do you think, um, do you think they would have had the wherewithal to approach the circle first? Or uh, do you think the circle might have, you know, twigged them when they arrived at Arventa and immediately recruited them? I think the circle would have approached the bull base. I mm -hmm. think okay. the bull base kind of, you know, were trying to gain their footing uh, and just sort of exploring this, this strange new frontier. Uh, but they they strictly have no interest in leading. They just want to be a part of it. Fantastic. Somnolentus, right? You're coming with me. We're going on a mission today. Aye. Excellent. Miss Biggs. And so Miss Biggs is having a meeting with members of their faction, the Hawkers. Like, on the surface, and for the most part, they're concerned with bringing the the wider elements that are necessary in any city to uh, this new outpost, right? Like, you know, whether it be dance halls, whether places you can find, you know, a drink or, or other, like, fun activities. But after the last time they went here, they discovered a number of interesting items. And so she wants to meet with their faction, have them appraised, figure out what they should do with these items, mm. whether they should be used as tokens of goodwill mm -hmm. or a way to accrue money, because you know you can always use more money. Yes, uh, yeah, you found a number of pieces of treasure and they can easily be utilized within uh, Arventa. And if you want, you can sell it for cash goods. But people say that the long sword with the crescent moon and the mithril shield with the uh, tiger on it are not extremely valuable, but there's something that they, they don't want to deal with it. They, they don't want to bring it into you know their, out, their stalls, their wares. They don't want to mix it in with the rest of their stuff. There's something about those items that they're like, not, not here. Key items. They, they're, they seem very key, or at least they're uh, not willing to engage the, the strange forces that they seem to admit. Okay. You, know, the, you know, the carving, the arc, the, the craftsmanship is perfectly tooled. There's, there's strange vib vibrance about it. They're willing to take it, but they, they're, they're not willing to pay for it. Mm. Okay. And is there any understanding of what the, these two items do? Or for all intents and purposes, are they just, you know, the regular versions of what they say they are. They're regular versions of what they are at this okay, point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with this, we will view down into the uh, <clears throat> what you've discovered with these, the uh, Lost Citadel. Did you guys have a plan or, or at least an area of interest? And I will propose wherever you end up going, whatever rooms we pass through, we'll just roll to see if random encounters uh, occur there, but we'll fast track it right until the point of interest. So if you want, there's several areas in the uh, of uh, egress. You can go to the front door, the back door, and then the caves to the to the west. <laughs> if we need a refresher on what everything is. I think Ms. Biggs is interested in what's going on in the west, personally. We're yeah. here. Mm -hmm. We're clearing it all out. That's what we're doing. Yeah. I'm interested in everything. Anything that's behind these black napkins. <laughs> I hate black napkins. I want them gone. <laughs> That's what that's what Herman wants. In that case, we can start there and just start going. Circle all around yeah. or try. Yeah. I'm with it. Yeah. I agree. I am on board. Mm, excellent. By the way, Herman Roth, a pleasure to be working with you. I don't think I introduced uh, myself. Some of the brevis, uh, formerly of the Third Legion. Mm, tremendous fighters. Uh, I've heard. <clears throat> well, what's he look like? Somnolentus is a stocky dwarf with flaming red hair, long beard, uh, bears, <coughs> legion leathers, uh, similar to Senex, 
Legion standard issue shield, which looks a little comical given his stature. Uh, it's quite tall in comparison. Uh, and wields a mace that is ironically styled after the palm tree of peace. <laughs> nice. What a stylistic thing for this dwarf to be carrying. <laughs> We're going into the back door? Yeah. All right. Who's driving? So you're heading in through the back door there. Oh, the no, door. sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh, the front door. My, yeah, my yeah, 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 yeah. Here's some more. Yeah. Situated. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can mm -hmm. I leave the mithril shield with my faction so I don't have it on my person? Yeah. <clears throat> Just make note of that. So yet again, find yourself amongst the thick, blackened, basalt walls of the citadel, and it looms as you can just hear like the almost like cicada-like sounds in the hot desert around the exterior of this place. And the entryway is just looming. Both of the doors still remain open as you traverse into the dark depths of the citadel. You guys are fairly certain this could be a very strategic hold for Arventa, both locally as a place of uh, you know, this, uh, defense, as well as you, know, you could convert it for the outpost's needs, be it living or otherwise. But you've encountered several things along the way, be they this bull god, as well as these strange beast creatures that have been trapped here for some time. And upon entering in this dark room, you're, you're met with the bull murals, the bull reliefs that uh, show the, the worshiping of this giant bull god. And there's like a ba relief that um, is extruded from the wall itself. And each of the pillars, they look ravaged and stripped of any valuable gems that might have been there at one point. And you want to continue into that next room? Yeah, we do. Yeah, great. So <clears throat> heading into this room, you're immediately met with the smell of a musty sort of underground. The walls are immediately uh, uh, deteriorate into a rough hewn stone as opposed to the rough passageway, the perfect passageway that you've experienced all throughout. You know you're going deeper into the underground as you're met with, you know, this underground. So these stairs are going down? Yeah, they're going down, and the passageway turns into almost like a fruit cellar, as it's a rough dirt. Mm. And what you just have any apples? Any wine? Can we see? Who's got the torch? I got a couple, do we want to light that up? I have a bow, though. I can hold it. All right, so I'll light it up. Here's the torch. All right, our torches run on real time. One hour of real time for this torch. Boom, okay, so we're gonna set that. Who's going first? Miss Biggs will go first. Miss Biggs, brave Miss Biggs. And you're, you, can, you can feel just like this movement in the air ahead. Who's got the torch? I do. You, okay, yep. as you are uh, walking in, all of a sudden the shimmering lights on the whole surface of this giant cave just starts shimmering. Oh? Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Anybody else see that? I've never seen anything like this before. I don't like it. Mm. I, I agree. Biggs? Can I look for traps? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, don't, you, you, this is a natural phenomenon, but there's all these quartz stones lining the walls. And if you were to rush in there any further, you think the light would bounce around and you'd have to, you'd probably be very blinding. Mm. <sighs> okay. Can, is there some way that I can like dampen the light so that it's not quite as bright and so that it's not quite so blinding? You tell me, yeah. You can, you can think of something creative, you know. If, if you had a mithril shield, you could cover it with a mithril shield. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have that, do you? I know, I know, but yeah. what about a uh, silver longsword? I kept that one on me. It's not enough square footage to cover <laughs> the torch. Um, so Somnolentis will raise his large rectangular legion shield and kind of hold it. Maybe he should be holding the torch. <laughs> I'll 
I'll take the torch. Yeah. All right. I mean, we'll give it and can they with their long tower shield. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the dwarf now holding it as Miss Biggs uh, continues forward, and from within, you can see figures running about. Now that you are blinded. Figures? Figures. Mm-hmm. Like the beastmen or something they else? They look like it, yeah. But they move way quicker than what you've seen. Well, I don't like this. Yeah, that makes me a little bit... Uh... Anything that can move faster than me is not my friend. I'm gonna cast Shield of Faith on myself. All right, go for it. <clears throat> Yeah, that's, uh, I failed that roll. Ooh, you want to keep it? Uh, it's early in the night. It is early in the night. You know what? For better or worse. I mean, you could, you also have this. You could use that as well. <laughs> I don't trust the orders. <laughs> I am, however, going... Some Noetis is going to remember a time with the Third Legion around the campfire where his faith was shaken in the battlefield that day and he had lost the favor of his gods. And he'll remember how that felt and it will strengthen his resolve. I'll go ahead and use that. Yeah, war is raging. Um, uh, back home, and it has been for oh, 80 years. All right, so go ahead. You're going to re-roll your spellcraft check, or your spellcasting check. Uh, so that's not going to do it. Your faith. It wasn't enough. He's shaking. Something about this. Maybe this the sparkling wall, the uh, domed ceiling, all these stones, maybe just catches you off guard. Maybe this is the citadel itself. Thank you, shaking your boots. Okay, so what's going on? He Solemnus tries to cast a spell and fails. Miss Biggs is going to say we should move forward slowly. They haven't always been aggressive. Sure. Let's yeah. uh, try and get to the end of the room here. Yeah, that's where Miss Biggs is at. Yeah, as you start heading deeper into this little cave complex. You can see there's like worked stone uh, stairs up and then a cave deeper further in. Go and sacks of um, webbing. They like, you know, uh, halfling size sacks of webbing, possibly holding some humanoid. Some a humanoid? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like in a net, basically? Yeah, but webbing. Miss Biggs wants to use the long sword to cut the web. Like spider web? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Wants to use the spindly thin rope. Okay, yeah, yeah. Not like not like a like on a ship webbing. No, oh, right, yeah. Right. No, this is of a natural material. Right, right. What are you saying? Wants to use the long sword to cut the webbing open. Yeah, you slice it open, and you can see the raggedy hair, hair of these beast creatures. One of them pops out. That just seems like these there are these beast creatures wrapped up in these webbings here. Hmm. And I, I assume that it is a dead beast creature. Does it appear dead? Is it moving? Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. With the old pulse check. This one's dead. Yeah. There's a five sacks in total. You opened one. I don't know if I really want to kill too much time in here and find out what did that. All right, lead the way. Let's yeah, let's keep going. Up the stairs, maybe. I mean, I kind of want to see. What's I, I can I can venture a guess, but fine. <laughs> right, you guys are spending some time here. You gonna go deeper into the caves? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As you head into these deeper caves, it's thick webbing. Like you'd have to push your way through, cut your way through, burn your way through something. Do you want to burn the webbing? Uh, yeah, I'll touch the torch to the webbing. You gonna start burning it? Yeah. Yeah. You starts smoldering and it's a noxious sort of black smoke that just starts pouring out and it, it, the, the webs start burning and start spreading wildly and you can hear like screeching from deeper within the cave hmm oh we pissed something off uh this smoke is pretty thick though i don't want to go deeper in there with that smoke until we clear out the webs okay 
You guys want to wait and let it burn? Yeah, Miss Biggs wants to maybe take a couple steps back. Is there anything that I can maybe like kind of like try to hide behind a little bit? Leverage a shot just in case something comes jumping out? Mm -hmm. It's going to take two rounds for all this to burn. Yeah, so Miss Biggs is going to kind of try to hide. Are you going to wait? Yeah. What's Solemn is doing? Something with this is going to stand his ground with his shield planted stoutly so Miss Biggs can hide behind us. <laughs> so you just plop it down. Nice. Yeah, Herman's also going to take position and get an arrow ready. Yeah, it's burning, it's burning. All right, and you just hear screeching like like someone, something is calling for other things. Oh, indeed. We just get the feeling, huh? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a call. Mm. And you can start hearing up these stairwells, like mo motion coming down as these strange creatures with bulbous wellies and multiple eyes, like six little beady eyes and just like little hairs and little spindly legs just start coming down this passageway. Go ahead, fire away. Um, nine. Ninth, the, the arrow goes wide. Uh, 13. 13? I thought that probably hits. Uh, yeah, roll for damage. Four. It's got, it hits one of them. These things look tough. Ah, uh, goblin spiders. <laughs> I hate those things. All right, well, initiative, as these things come howling at you guys from the darkness. Uh, so what is it again? It's just a straight roll? Plus or? dexterity. Oh, okay. Uh, 20. 22. 11. <laughs> 22 highest, you go, and we'll go clockwise. That's fine. Mm -hmm. All right, so Miss Biggs, you, get, you fire your arrow off, and you see these little spindly creatures. <laughs> the arrow goes wide from all everyone, basically. Um, I'm going to shoot another one. Okay, yeah, yep. It's unaware of you still. Uh, it is what? Unaware of you. Oh, wait. Was it aware of me? What I shot? No, no. Oh. Can I redo that damage? Go, oh, yeah, it's not yeah, accurate. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, so, total of 8, uh, 12. 12? Oh, yeah. Still coming at you. It looks crippled. Oof. These okay. things look, look tough. I got 11. For it to hit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it deflects off of its hide. As your arrow goes wide, do you want to say where you are or move? Um, actually, if it's unaware of me, then I think I want to use a token to try to reroll this. Okay. Yeah. Um, so <sighs> the first time that Miss Biggs ever shot, like you know, an arrow in true defense of themselves, was like you know this was after. They uh, had, you know, their family had been fired from this noble's house and they were tasked with standing guard while somebody was going to try to pilfer some goods. And they were told that they wouldn't have to shoot anything, that it was gonna be a quick in and out, but something went wrong and they had to leverage a shot at uh, somebody that they were not expecting to. <laughs> and that shot hit. Um, you re-gauge, recalibrate. Yeah. Nice, roll for damage. Um, and then not aware? Unaware? Okay, so it would be D6. Uh, yeah, they're not aware of you. Yeah. Okay, so three, and then I get another two for backstab? Yep, two weapon damage. Six, uh, eight. A total of eight? A total of eight. Yeah, so attacking the one that... Uh, Herman hit as well. Ah, it finishes so. that thing and it tumbles down the stairs. And it's just dead, as you can just see its little mouth. As it was like foaming of webbing in its, in its mouth. Solemnus. Solemnus. Somnolentus. 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 <laughs> Somnolentus is going to hold up the palm tree of peace and it attempts to imbue it with holy weapon. Let's see, is your faith still shaking? 19. Ooh. 
No. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it is not. <laughs> it is. It is. It's <laughs> yeah. it filled with resolve. <laughs> what happens? Describe it. Uh, the bronze base glows with a warm yellow light and feels heftier in the hand. Hmm. As this other little etter cap comes running down, and you can see it's also foaming at the mouth and just, and it spits out this huge, or this web where you guys are all standing. Um, and we'll try to, you guys are all stuck in place. As this web just holds you guys down. You see its little arms, its little legs just running around into the darkness. All right, you are up, Herman. So you're gonna take a D4 damage per round for being in this web. This is kind of toxic. You take three damage, and you can make a dex check to escape. All right, let's do that. So that's 16. You rip yourself out of it. Does it look like I could burn it, or is it too fresh? Uh, you can burn it, yeah. Give me that torch. Your allies are in it. Everyone's in it. I know. Yeah. Give me the torch. <laughs> so I set the torch to the webbing under their feet. It actually burns quicker than the ones that have been settled for a long time. Great. Fantastic. You guys are in burning webbing now. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a lot of webbing? Yeah, I mean, they're all stuck in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like not just their feet that are tied up? I, they're, they're gonna get burned. If, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Sorry, I thought it was just like a little bit like. All right. it, yeah, but they don't. Help. But they don't have to make right, checks right. to escape. Okay. So that's the trade-off. Is like you. Do you want me to burn you guys? <laughs> yeah. Burning is fine. Yeah. I will yeah. take it. Yeah, they're gonna take <laughs> damage. Yeah, we'll yeah, say D four damage way. either way. Right, so you're right. just burning it off of them. Right. So to hopefully get us out of here. So I'm gonna. I was like, wow, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, you know, burn it off of you and uh, actually pass the torch back. Okay. Oh, juggling torches. Sonalatis, you want the torch? Thanks. Here you go. You got a torch holder <laughs> on your shield? Yeah. Sure, yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, now I'm going to... Can I see where the creatures are? Or is there just one? There's just one coming in, but you hear something pissed off right, down right, there. Right, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's probably in the whole nest of them in there. Right, right. So I'm going to move back towards the edge of the cave. Okay, yep. Um, can I still see it? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to shoot it. Uh, 14. Okay, you hit. All right. It's a wear. One. One damage. All right, Miss Biggs, you can see your companion burning yourself out of this webbing. You're going to take a D4 damage. Ah, three damage. Okay. I'm kind of choking on the fumes, but you can easily just rip yourself out. Yeah, I'm going to take a shot and then run back. Okay. 18. Nice. You roll for damage. Three. All right. So you, and you scuttle backwards as well. And there's Solomentus. Somnolentus. 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 So there you are. You see the burning fi fire of the webbing. You take two yeah. damage. We call him Brevis. His last name. Yeah, it's a little more brief. <laughs> nah, I got to work on that. <laughs> Somnolentus. All right. Som. So I'm the Lentus. Lentus. Uh, going to swing the palm tree of peace at the better cap. Yeah. Clobber him. That's going to be a 13, 16, and 17. Yep, yeah, you hit. Rock. Roll for damage. That's going to be three points of damage. This thing still on its two legs. Get out of there, Brevis. And you can hear it. It's like communicating something back there, and you can hear scuffling. It's probably more coming, burned mm -hmm. and disheveled. And it tries its best to bite into you, and it's just two bite attacks Oof. against Somnolentus. Yeah. yeah. And now we have a crit. And it's like, cha, 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 cha. So we're going to roll this crit right here. Right, left tokens, anyone, before I move on? Can we roll? Yeah. 
Definitely, yep. You want to reroll that crit? So, yeah, Herman is uh, really focused on clearing out this citadel and has a lot of hope that that can happen someday uh, in the very near future and is going to want to not have any critical attacks get in that get in the way of that. So you want to reroll the 16, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Come on. Oh, it's still a hit. Jesus Christ. Yeah, right. Right. All right, two damage. So you take eight damage. Right. Oh, As right. this thing is just, and you can see from the shadows, two more of these air caps coming. From the shadows? Yeah, from deep oh, within the nest that you burned. Get out, get out. So it's my turn? Yep. All right, I'm gonna be backing into the hallway here. Yep. And I'm going to shoot one of the, um, uh, the the burned ones coming from the hallway. Okay. Or the, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, 21. And are they aware? Uh, yes, they are. Well, oh, fucking one. <laughs> so you're heading back? Well, <clears throat> yeah, I'm backing in there. You Were you back there? Yeah. Oh, okay. You guys are heading back. Did okay. you move? Yeah, I, I did not. Did you mean to move? <laughs> I can move in attack. Yeah, yeah. Getting my yeah, yeah. my my roll sets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You get an action. I would have I would have loved to have moved back to the other corner of the room there. If I... Well, you got hit though. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. He would have gotten hit after he moved. And the thing would have hit whoever was there, which would would have been you. But the, the, the initiative. No, no, but I'm saying, because if he didn't... He yeah, did good for you. Yeah, we'll just move uh, yeah, forward. Right. Yeah, because if he moved, then it would... Uh, yeah, so right, he, right. he didn't. He didn't. Good good to know moving forward. Yeah, sure. sure. Fair enough. Unless you want to take that eight damage. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you want to take the uh, hit, then yeah, you can. All right. Yeah. All right, uh, Miss Begs, you see Solemn Solemnthus holding ground against an enter cap and two more from the shadows. I'm gonna take another shot if I have one at mm-hmm. the other cap. Which one? The one in the darkness or the one against? The one against Saul. Okay. Nine. Goes wide. Um, and then I'm gonna take another step back. Like we should, uh, we should move back. <laughs> we, should, uh... we should, in fact, double move out of here. <laughs> double near. All right, you're up. Solemn Lentis. Solemn yeah. Lentis. All right. So. Somnolentis. <laughs> I'm going to get it. Skull By the end of this episode, I'm going to get this. Uh, so, Somnolentis is going to move back this way as far. Sure, you can double move if you want, yeah. I'm not going to double move. I'm going to single move. Okay. And I'm going not to. Not sure cast, about that call. <laughs> but go I'm for going it. to cast Cure Wounds on myself at the end of the move. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Make it happen. Do it. 17, oh, 20. Let's go. All right. So the first die is a six. Second die is a six. Oh, so I only gain 12 hit points. Oh, yeah, I am feeling I'm the glad that my naysaying was misplaced. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you feel your vigor restored. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're there with uh, Herman. We'll say that one of these creatures um, does his best. The one that you've been attacking this whole time does his best to try to bite each of you guys. We'll say that's Herman and and hits Somnolentus yep. for four damage. Okay. And misses Herman. And you can see now there's one of them coming out of the darkness, charred, eyes you know, scarred, and his hair is singed, and it's it looks it looks standing on a leg, if you will, mm. but it's coming out of their pit, and they're carrying gems. Somnolentus, fall back, I'll cover you. With a 22 All right. and a uh, four, okay. Nice, finally. Yeah, <laughs> this thing's huffing and puffing and looks, looks like it's gonna back, like, skedaddle. So I'm also. Oh, it's gonna skedaddle. Yeah, it's it's right. it's dead. If with the next hit. Dude, 
<laughs> just like, shaking my fist at him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Your so arrows is... lodge within it, and it. <sighs> yeah, I'm not gonna. Want. I'm not gonna fall too far back. I'm gonna hang towards the edge of this. Okay. Uh, the mm-hmm. hallway here. Mm-hmm. Miss Biggs. Yeah, from the hallway, I'm gonna take a shot at the one that looks like it's running. Fifteen. You hit it. For six. Oh, you hit it as it's running away, turning it. You shoot it right in the back. Just nice shot, the Biggs. With your eagle eye, that you can somehow still see the thing. <laughs> Incredible <laughs> shot. You know, I'll uh, just move away. Yeah. <laughs> like, like a little corner shot. Around corner the corner. Shot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, around the corner. Hell yeah. So I'm gonna let this. You see these two figures now emerging from the darkness. Arms full of gems, you know, they're ki- like carrying out all sorts of stuff from some deeper nest in there. Hmm. Only if you had a scroll of burning hands. <laughs> <laughs> Alas. Alas. I'm gonna go ahead and cast your wounds on myself again. Okay. Start. Goes. Uh, hold on, wait. Ten, and I get a plus one, so you need eleven or higher. Well, it is it is eleven. Great. So you hold on to your faith. Three. All right. Stand your ground and heal your wounds up. Having a breather, because you see these creatures start scuttling up the stairwell into the darkness. Give chase. Do you want to move? (laughs) I mean, Pumna with us, you must be sleeping. Since they they just went, (laughs) I'm assuming that my turn is over. Yeah, right. All right, so I'm going to. Yeah, what were you? Sorry, I cut you off there. No, it's okay. Yeah. You saw them, you know, make a decision to move or not. All right, so uh, I'm going to. Let's get them. No. <laughs> Biggs, they have gems. Retreat! I'm coming. <laughs> Charge again, yeah. So I'm gonna Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna move to the to the, like where I can get an angle on him. Okay. Can I so I can see him now? Oh, uh, who's got the torch? Uh no. Something like this. They're in the darkness. No? Yeah, up that hallway. No, it's completely dark. Well, I'm gonna fire a shot. Disadvantage, sure. Oof. <laughs> All right, well. I'm going to double move. Um, yep, yep. You'll, you'll get a little bit away from Herman, but yeah. Okay, so. You won't be, you won't, you'll be like, you'll be like, to double move there. Okay. Oh, like near Herman? Behind Herman, yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah. you were around the bend further away. Okay. So I'm going to let's get that light over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I will double move up as far as I can go. Can we, in passing, see if there's any gems left in the cave? Kind of like running by, quick little over-the-shoulder glance. Uh, you'd have to spend more time than that. Mm, uh, whatever. It's, it's ash in there. It's sort of scorched. It's burned. You can circle back. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Or so we think. Somnolentus <laughs> yep. so. goes up and starts shining his uh, his torch into the room here. And you can see it immediately turns back into the basalt stone walls as a stairwell up enters what seems to be this uh, robing chamber. There's all of these robes pinned to the wall all along the you know the western left or most wall where you, with you guys walking in, and um, it seems like the walls have these chipped mosaics and the robes themselves are white, reminiscent of the murals that you saw in the entrance here, worshiping the bull, bull god. And then uh, a doorway opened, leading into a darkened passage. No sign of the creatures. Not that you can see. Given Somnolentus' priestly knowledge, is he able to glean anything else about these robes? Uh, yeah, they're, they are, they're made for worshiping. They seem very ceremonious, and the way they're pinned here seems very ritualistic. And you could presume if donned in a ritualistic fashion and performing the rites, uh, it could be beneficial to the, uh, the cult themselves. Hmm. Uh, I'm not saying it would unlock magic powers, but you could make that logical leap that they probably believed if you did this and then that and then this, a blessing of a from the bull god would happen. 
Can I snag one? Yeah, if you want to spend some time, you can rifle through them and take one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll grab one that looks like it's roughly sized for my stature. Okay, sure. Can we see in the mosaics the correct order to be putting on these robes? If you were to d- take some time, you could probably just do something like that, yeah? Well, hmm. So, so it ends the song of Lawrence's turn. It's, it's my turn. Kind of semi crawling ish here. Crawling rounds, which we're keeping track of, and you guys are exploring here. Okay, and then now it's Herman's turn. Right, so they're, the creatures are gone. Something, yeah, there's something ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're kind of loosely going yeah, around right. because so, we're tracking rounds, and every. It's risky here, so every two yeah, DM sure, rounds. Sure. So I'm coming in. Happening. All right, it, it, it's great. We've got some uh, robes here. I kind of ascertain, talk to Somnolentis, and figure out what's going on. Hmm. Interesting murals. I wonder if I did this in a ritualistic fashion, if I could get some benefit. <laughs> so I'm going to start like studying it and grabbing a robe. You're studying the, studying the, the murals, yeah. yeah, picking out a robe that kind of like fits Herman. Okay. Um, if we're no longer giving chase, then I think Miss Bix is going to want to try to look in this room. So, are you guys all in this room? Yeah, I think at least two of you are. Yeah, Have you we progressed are. in as well, Miss Bix? You were trailing behind. You see these two figures giving chase, and now they've kind of stopped yeah. in their tracks. They they're, they're gone. But listen, yeah, they're deep, they're deeper in. Yeah, they're deeper yeah, in. We kind of share. Hey, there's some interesting robes in here. I mean, I think that if, like, maybe there's still, like, a little bit of smoldering, there's this question of, did they leave anything behind in this other room? And I think Miss Biggs wants to investigate that. You're going to go investigate? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Yeah, uh, you can see that there's, amongst the webbing, there's ashes of what looks to be scrolls. Just burnt completely through. Um, you also see, since you have traveled through a secret passage, that there's a secret passage here as well, too. That's just like the uh, hole was covered in complete webbing, and now that it's burned through, there's like a, a deeper chamber that could have easily been missed. Deeper hey, in. I see a secret passage. Do we want to... Look at this real quick before we go deeper. Sure, let me ritualistically put on these robes first. All right. I'll come shine some light on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never that way shining the light down. Sure, he's going to be left in darkness. Can you go halfway? Can I get in the, the doorway here? Yeah, and kinda half sure. and yeah half you're it. kind of in darkness as well, too. It's amazing you even saw that thing. <laughs> so is, is, have I now studied and ascertained the method? Uh, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, great. Cool. Ooh. Herman kind of smugly puts on this. Ooh, not bad. This uh, robe. Yeah, as you like Donna and there's a big like oversized hood and the it's all the musty, moldy, and just they smell nasty and as you start <laughs> putting your hands in it, you know, in it, you feel that there's a key in a in a pocket. Oh, oh musty key. Musty key. What does this key look like? Let me take this out. Yeah, it's a rusted, heavy brass key. Nice. And like as you're holding it when you put the robes on, you kinda hear like a whispering voices, almost like they're in the hood themselves. Hmm. Did you guys hear that? I think those are the mice in the hood. Hmm. hmm, hmm. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> kind of rejoin them in the... Uh, Miss Biggs, you spend some time here as the light comes around. You hear uh, chittering from deeper within the secret passageway. I'm going to take a peek. A peek? Yeah, a peek. He's not going to let you get away with that? A peek? <laughs> take a peek? <laughs> Yeah. Here's your peak. Do I do I hear? Do I see where the chittering is coming from? Yeah, it sounds like more air caps. More air caps. Mm-hmm. I'm like, sal- somnolentus. Get a little, get a little closer. I think there might be more down here. Somnolentus will creep up and provide a little bit more illumination here. Okay. As you, yep, turn your head around this passageway that leads deeper into this chamber, you're met by the face of an air cap as it just spits out webbing at you guys, like holding you guys all into place. Another one deeper within it yells out a scream, like, yeah, like some sort of command. Herman, you're in darkness. Oh, you idiots. What did you do this time? (laughs) There's more. 
You're on your own. I'm not coming down there. <laughs> Go to hell, you two. <laughs> You're up, Herman. I'm gonna fucking stand there in the darkness. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've I've kind of come. I'm not in the chamber. Mm -hmm. I think I'm down at the bottom of the stairs there. Yeah. Like looking at them, just like get webbed. And I'm yep. like, what the hell? Yeah. 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 So I'm just gonna. All right. Notch an arrow and see if I can kind of see any of these editor caps coming out. You're on your own. If you can burn yourselves out, then so be it. You, yeah, you hear uh, sounds from behind you. I hear sounds from behind me. <laughs> oh, God. So hurry up, will you? <laughs> so I'm kind of, uh, yeah, I, I guess, trying to stay in the shadows of, like, the angle here. Yeah, you're yeah, you're in the shadows. Am I sneaking? Sure. One would say that I'm perhaps sneaking. You are sneaking. Sure. Not on, you're in, if you're staying in this passageway, though, you won't allow anything to pass by you. These creatures, though, will be able to see in the dark. Uh, mm. All right, well... Unless you're actively hiding in that robe room. Otherwise, you're joining them. Mm. I can't hide in the pile of bodies. What piles of bodies? The bo bodies that are all wrapped up. Kind of like hide amongst those piles. If you want piles. to. It's on the opposite end of the room, though. Oh, I thought they were like right there. Yeah, they're over here. Oh, all right. What is that, like a single move? Double move? If, if you want to go there, double move, yeah. All right, fine. Yeah, I'll move over there. All right, so I'm hiding amongst the bodies. Hiding amongst the bodies. Miss Biggs. Uh, I'm going to try to get out of the weapon. Okay, go for it. 14. Yep, you start tearing your way through the webbing as it corrodes for two damage. I go unconscious. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Am I able to make it to like the edge of the webbing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're out of the webbing, but the spurning and, and corroding at you as you put solemn, well, solemn, somnolentus. I want to put an S O L and it's an S O M. <laughs> somnolentus ahead of you. You see Miss Biggs clawing her way out of the uh, webbing. She collapses at the edge there. And go ahead and roll your death timer there. How does this work? You're gonna do that plus your constitution modifier. If my constitution is negative? You have one round. You have one full round. You roll the one, minus one. You have one, one full round before Miss Biggs <laughs> is released from her mortal coil. What the Somnolentus do? Blasted by the webbing, seeing the air caps deep within, you see? Shimmering gems mm. deeper within the hot cave. Mm. Ashes lie at your feet. You hear the sk skittering, scutter, scurrying, skulking sound of Herman behind you. Somnolentus is feeling altruistic. <laughs> um, can, from my webbed position, I reach Miss Biggs for a cure light? Take one damage. It's burning away. Yeah. Yes, you can, you, you, I'll say, you can pull and struggle your way to lend a hand on Miss Biggs. All right, well, uh, <laughs> 10. You need 11 or higher to get this spell off. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Go ahead. Give it a spin. How do I make sure So make sure, make sure you have the D20 up, which is what you want, and you're going to spin it, and it, what's in between those two gold arrows at the top there. Yeah. So, like, it's easier if you put it down on the table and just spin like that. Okay, so Somnolentus, in a moment before entering the Citadel, had a moment with the Oris investigating. He's heard much about it. And now, for the first time, as he held, holds it in his hand, he sees a moment covered in web. It's like the introduction to Spider-Man. It's like... All these little spider things happen, yeah. And you see these little images appear of Miss Biggs clawing her way through. It's a 13. Do you choose to accept it? I would love to accept it. As you hold it within your hands, you see another gem light up, and you see a moment in which it could go either way. Your spell fizzles in a, in a moment of uh, duress, but instead the Horus has guided you to a, a reality in which you get your Cure Light Wounds spell off. Can roll two Thank you. This thing's gonna explode. Uh, eight. Eight. <sighs> Points of healing to Miss Biggs. <laughs> and is Miss Biggs like back on her like feet? Miss mm -hmm. so Biggs is back up. She's awake. She's down. 
Okay, but but back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. death timers, okay. n- nullified. Right. Alive and well. But now can Somnolentus survive two bites? Ooh. We'll find them. We'll find out. Yum, 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 yum. One of those bites hits for four damage. And as these enter caps start clawing their way out, these also look scorched. Can I see that yeah, coming down the Yeah, you see another one? Yep. All right, so I'm going to shoot. Is this one of the burned ones from before? Yes. Yep. I'm going to shoot that burned one. One. Crit fail. Do you choose to accept it? <laughs> yes. It is unaware of you. Ooh. Yep, I accept it. Okay, let's see. Um, what setback happens for you with this critical fail? Hmm. Give me a moment to think about it. Miss Biggs, you're alive and well. I'm going to back up to where Herman is, and I'm going to take a shot at the one that's coming down the stairs. So that way, Son is not being pincered. That's okay. That's great. It, it is aware of you. Know. Okay. And you can only move half because you've got to stand up. So you're inching your way past. 14. Yeah, we're hits. Roll for damage. Six. And you kill it as this thing is deathly close to dying. This big spits. It's like a lot of like phlegmy blood. <laughs> Thank you. So. Yeah, there's another one deeper within as well, too. You can see just figures of it. Maybe what? as a setback, just I spend, instead of moving, I have to re-string my bow. Restring I think your we've bow? done that before. Yeah. Okay. I'm giving you the option. You're good. You, you, that was you, moving in yeah, action. Yeah, I was moving in action. You guys are pinned down by these air caps in their nest. They seem to have drawn you in like, like a fly to a spider's web. Somnolentus. Are they within palm reach? Um, yeah, one, one of them. Yeah. You just got bit, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to give them the palm. Okay. <laughs> Talk to the hand. That's a no. That's a big no. What'd you roll? Deuce. Deuce. Okay. So you, what spell was that? What were you trying to cast? Oh, I was swinging my palm. Oh! oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Thought you were trying to do like a burning hands or something versus the ball. No. All right. That's unfortunate. Do you, mm-hmm. you're going to get burned too. Mm-hmm. Unless you want to move three mm-hmm. damage. Yeah, yeah. So, wait, what happened? Did you burn yourself out of the thing? No, or I, 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 I took a swing. Yeah, oh, okay. it looks like these uh, webbing will corrode in the next round. Oh, like fizz fade away. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So they're not like permanent no. structures. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, I can't do anything else if I'm rooted down to the ground because I'm assuming burning myself out. You can't roll for. You can. You can do a strength. Yeah. You can roll to get out, right? Mm-hmm. You can get a dexterity to, to try to pull yourself out. Dexterity. Mm-hmm. I will go for it. Okay. I'm not feeling optimistic. Though. Twelve or higher. Eleven. Minus oh, one, ten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can't do that. Yeah. Help! <laughs> okay, these things, they're, they're trying their best to, to, to bite. This thing's going to bite you. I'm <laughs> trying to run over. Just bite Miss Biggs. Fight. You take five damage, so I'm going to let this... I'm oh, down! Oh, man, he just bites you and runs. That's tough. That is tough. Go ahead, roll your death timer. Oh yeah. D4. Mm-hmm. Two. Plus constitution. It's a minus one, so is that a one? That is a one. That is a one. <sighs> so I'm Melantis. Wow. You guys are gonna... I don't... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Biggs, what happened in there? Psalm is down. Psalm is down. How many of those creatures are there? I see three. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, this is a lost cause. <laughs> I need to leave, so I'm gonna double move across to the to the hallway there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We can we can get them. These are burned. Yeah, they are. They are. They are greatly injured. I took it down with one shot. You did. He did. Yeah. yeah. Fine. So as I'm about to dart out, 
I hear Miss Biggs' encouraging call, and so I'll try. Which one are you going after? The uh, one in front of Miss Biggs. I, I don't know. Can I, yeah, can I see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. It's not aware of you. Okay, yeah. Fucking nine. You choose to accept that? No, fine. I'll <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Oops, that's twelve. Sorry. <laughs> A moment, Herman in his tent. While he was all alone, spun the Oris and got a four. Did you roll it again? Nope, nothing happens. <laughs> so your arrow goes wide. <laughs> Miss Biggs? I'm gonna take a shot at the one right in front of me. Go for it. God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Deflects off of his hide. Doesn't deal damage. I will use the orphans. A moment. Back in our venta. In the Onyx Ballroom. Investigating it. You see this webbing. You see all these pathways. Oh my gosh. <laughs> What's your roll? A natural one. <laughs> if you see a moment of terror, do you choose to accept that? You don't have to use it. Oh, okay. This allows you to like see routes and you can open up multiple routes. I see. By keeping rolling, but you'll take your other seven. Yeah. So you, 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 you're like, you're, you're reminiscing of all of the facts that you saw these, this horrible webbing of peril. And you find yourself in that reality. As if the Oris is trying to warn you. Yeah, okay, and stabilizing doesn't... You need an intelligence 15 or higher to stabilize. Shoot, I actually realize now I could have done something very different. Um, is he completely blocking my way? Like, no. I can't move? No, you go around him. Okay, then I am going to turn invisible and go around him. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, this is your moment. Roll a natural 20. Mm -hmm. Right here. Mm -hmm. That will not cut the mustard. You choose to accept it? You can horse it. I mean, you might as <laughs> Jack it up! <laughs> like, you keep rolling that thing. This, this Oris is going to explode. Like, wow, you're doing it. So you see a gray vision. It's a wonder, no wonder you didn't want to come in here because you saw a vision of yourself fall amongst the webbing. <laughs> As the, the life is slowly extinct. So one round or do you have another round? My roll was a one, so I assumed that that counts. The one round, okay. So Solomnolentis is slowly ravaged by poison and despair. You're gonna have to roll up a new character while you're sitting right here. You got another one planned? I can make that happen. This is why we lost the war. Just change his name. <laughs> Tom Nolentis. <laughs> Cause you're gonna, you're gonna join him right here. Next round. All right, so well, here we go. Next round. Is there anything on Psalm's body that they would want to give back to their faction. Yeah, what's your what's your, what's a vision that Somnolentis has? Or a memory or a token. He remembers the day that his cult elder bestowed upon him the scepter known as the palm tree of peace. Mm, the scepter, the palm tree of peace. Platters <laughs> hang suspended by the webbing that holds his body down as he tries to struggle in this webbing material, bleeding out, bitten, chewed, clawed. 
amongst the, the burned ashes of the webbing at his feet. So you, you can join as soon as you're ready with your little yeah, with your I shadow uh, darkling character yeah, creation right, right there. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a beautiful thing. So with that, these creatures see the blood, see their fallen victims, and they have this bur- burst of, of, of uh, uh, you know, morale as if they're, they're regaining composure. And they start to, like, Put down their defenses and like, like try to ch- trap you guys here. All right, so that's what they're doing. They're just kind of sitting there. Yeah, like trying to like taking the, the the kill as like a moment like of intimidation. Like clearly these guys, are gonna, these people will back down now. Like ah, we, we are the superior mm. creatures here, despite them all charred and burned. Right, right, right. But they're they're riding high. All right. Does that mean I can get two shots off? A little Robin Hood, <laughs> men in tights, like the five arrows on the thing? If you can crit it, sure. <laughs> okay. All right, so 15. Okay. He hits, roll for damage. So this is unaware, right? Mm-hmm. So five, seven, nine. Nine down. This thing, you kill it as it just is burnt to a crisp and you finish would, it off. I would also argue narratively, because their defenses are so down, the other creature has no idea where that arrow came from. Sure. Nice. Okay. All right. So, got a chance. I'm not going to say anything because I'm sneaking. <laughs> nice! You just like give away your position. Fuck yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Biggs, yeah. you see the thing fall behind you, knowing Herman's lurking somewhere in the shadows. Miss Biggs is going to take the palm tree of peace, and there's like a very quiet, like, you know, like, I'm so sorry, so. Mm. Uh, and is going to do the rest of return this to satisfaction. Uh, and then they're still invisible. Mm-hmm. So I also think they're gonna like move here or something like that. So that's, that's it. Things. Yeah. Well, I'm like putting my bag. So. Sure. Well, I, yeah. I always imagine this isn't ma- magic. We talked about this. This is yeah. magical invisibility. You're just like walking or like unaware. People are unaware of your presence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Somnolentus is there. Deep from within. <laughs> you can hear. I love it. I love it. Are you ready? Where is the new character coming in? Right down this corner. They, you right hear the this struggle this of battle. You hear screaming and yelling. In fact, you hear one of your faction members' very familiar cry <laughs> echo through the chamber of the, of the Lost Citadel. From around the corner. Hilarious, the elf, peeks out with a longbow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and takes <laughs> aim <laughs> at one of the other guys. Uh, that will be a... He at least has some dignity to use a different mini. <laughs> <laughs> he died a round ago. <laughs> You've already got it. You no haven't even left him on the I board. No <laughs> All right. Sixteen. You hit it. <laughs> oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Changing up the dice here. That's right. Uh, You're getting tough. Eight. So ten. So with a vigor, <laughs> a redemptive arrow f- f- comes from around the corner, th- killing the la- the one of the last Edder caps not in the nest. Hilarious matters under his breath. For some. For some, already. What was your, what was your faction name again? The Vulpes Argenta. The Vulpes Argenta. Argentum? Argentum. Argentum have been. Not vanquishing. Um, championing their fallen members one Avenging. after another. Avenging. That is where I was looking for. Thank goodness. Hiding in the wings. Is there? Now these creatures are 
You don't hear or see anything. Your timing is impeccable. Who are don't you? Don't shoot. <laughs> No, you guys know each other. You've known each other from our events. Yeah, but I'm popping out. Oh, so yeah. They could be like, whoa, you know. There's another one! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just drill over the dead. They're coming out everywhere. <laughs> wow, yeah. Great Wait, timing. I gotta give you the pleasure. Oh, no. the, 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 please. the pleasure. Sorry. Stamp me, Shadow Master. Uh, here we go. Dark Master. <laughs> Dark Master. <laughs> the Dark Master's doing his duty. <laughs> Uh, 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 I almost missed that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. <laughs> I just saw your new character sheet. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate, you know. Uh, Deaths are going to happen. Hey, yeah. you can join Senex. Yeah. How many does your faction have now? Uh, I got... So... This is your third character. This is my third character, of. so I got three left. Yeah, yeah see? You get rolling. And, mm -hmm. But now you guys have a history of <laughs> fallen foe. No more characters. And you kill it. With us. And now you're up. All right. We've got to get back in there and finish them off. I think I heard some more scuttling earlier. And we've got to get our fallen comrade. So, I'm gonna move into the chamber. Okay. As you walk in, you can see, you can hear the sizzling flesh of Somnolentus, his body wrapped up in the webbing as it slowly corrodes and melts away, the last the last life of the, the webbing. Mm. With the torch still burning in his shield holder. Yeah, right. <laughs> Could we yeah, let's see, does, does it go out? No, you're lucky it doesn't go out. <clears throat> uh, well, all right, so do I see any more creatures? Not from where you're standing. All right, so is that my double move or is that a single move? Single. All right, well, I'm gonna stand guard mm -hmm. with my bow. Get in here, you two. We need to clear out this nest. Miss Biggs? Miss Biggs is going to move. Can I throw the torch into the room? Into the other room? Yeah. I want to do that. It's going to go out on a one or two. Okay. You can see, like, a shadowy figure. It just starts screaming wildly in there. When it does that, can I shoot at it? Yeah, go for it. And then since I'm stealthy, unaware, is there advantage? What does that mean? No, it's, it's all, it knows you're there. <laughs> well, no, 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 I'm saying because of the stealthy. Because I was invisible. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you can get advantage. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that's right, you were invisible. 17. Okay, 20. Okay, it hit you. All right, you hit it. You hit. Roll for damage. And it's unaware because you're invisible. Okay. Five, six. So with that, the last arrow <laughs> takes out that creature. <laughs> and you can just hear the silence. Fall on the nest of the inner caps. Nice shooting, Biggs. And there, so nice enough. Some... Too little, too late. Describe your new character. Hilarious is a thin, wiry elf with platinum hair, dressed in blue and purple robes. Legolas. With leather armor hidden underneath. Hilarious doesn't talk much. And you see the companions that you've seen around Arventa and Somnolentis, and uh, he, they weren't even here yet. Your other character. They never made the voyage here. You're, you, you rejoin your companions in the depth of this, and there's gems scattered through all on the ground here from the two that ran away. Seemed like they were trying to bait you guys as other ones were, were, were holding back for a pincer attack, and their plan worked, but not thoroughly enough as you stand amongst the ruins of these things. And there's just bits and pieces of what looked to be beast creature, beast man bones, all you know, strung throughout the webbing. And there's just other treasures and goods with deeper within their nest. Miss Biggs will first go into this other room because that's where the torch is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, are we out of initiative now? Yeah. 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 Uh, Herm is gonna follow in there. Mm -hmm. And then see what's in here. Yes, um, quite a haul actually. It seems like they're hoarding these treasures, putting them into the, the skulls that they've eaten out of the of the beast men's, uh, you know, uh, bones. And there's 200 gold, two valuable pearls, an uh, alabaster statue of a bull, incense bowls, jade snake bracelets, 
and thick gold necklace with uh, uh, go- thick gold links. Miss Biggs is going to first take the 200 gold and give 50 to herself, 50 to Herman. Okay, thank you. Uh, 50 to Hilarious. 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 And then put 50 by Sun's body. Mm. In the moment of remembrance, you pay out your dues to the fallen dwarf. Um, any spoils that you would like? Does Herman see anything with the Gravier crest that he has been recognizing around the citadel here? Uh, you see it ta- like amongst the webbing from the beast men that you know you found one of them. There could be more if in there if you want to search those web canister uh, uh, pods as well too. Okay, but in this room, I'm not seeing like any any item that has the crest like the crown did. No, there's just tabards that are like strewn within the webbing. Yeah, okay, so nothing new that I haven't seen. I mean, I've seen those before. Yeah, I, this I, se- I, I this this seems like an area that. Things have been pulled into, but other creatures haven't ventured in. Right, right, it's right. like natural caves, uh, you know, the, the 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 nest of everything. From what you found over there with the the, the diadem gem or the diadem crown and all right, these right. the taverns, okay. yeah. So it's well, I'll give you your pick if there's anything that looks appealing. Hilarious will enter the chamber, look around, take the pearls, yeah, mm-hmm. put them into his backpack, and then walk by, and passing by Psalm, he'll just put a hand on Psalm's chest for a brief moment on the ground, and then stand up and ready his bow once more. We'll give the palm tree, or we'll present the palm tree. Psalm attaches it to his belt, salutes you, is ready to adventure once more. And just as you have given over the palm tree of peace, the palm leaf of peace, you are given it, and the torch just slowly sputters out as the whole room just completely becomes black, and you see some Nolentis's body almost like glowing like it's like like a spirit just coming out and it's like flying up and he just has a passageway flies further deeper into the citadel it's just, and you can see like a spectral image within that as it moves there's like you can see images of the battles that he's fought of all the warriors that he's faced and of all the things that he encountered in his life on the, on the battlefield and, and at home but it travels through the whole uh, citadel as get, heading down, heading down a passageway, perhaps you'll encounter it later. But it's like his spirit was drawn to something within this chamber, within this complex. As you stand there, in the dark, but not for long, as Herman relights a torch. Um, Did Sam have a torch on them? Yeah. What, what gear did you have? Sam had an extra torch. I brought two. Well, today. you brought two. Sam had two. Oh, okay. So. And a rope and rations. And your armor and stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think Miss Biggs is going to grab the extra torch off of Sam's body just in case. Um, um, I'm also going to uh, grab the necklace. I think you mentioned there was a, a necklace. A big chain gold link necklace, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which of these items do we think look like they're, they're potentially worth the most? Um... What was the gold, the statue, the necklace, the pearls? Is there anything else? There's jade. Oh, just like random incense bowls. Gems. Yeah, oh, okay. you think that the two pearls are are the most valuable. Okay. And the next would be the necklace. And then you picked up. Okay, that's fine then. then and I there could... were scrolls and stuff, but they all got burned. Okay. Oh, were they like magic scrolls? Yeah, or... yeah, yeah. A few of them. Or do they do any of them look recoverable? Like no, at all? No. <laughs> Burnt, charred. Okay. In that case, can I pick up the gems that the other other caps were 
Yep, 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 yep. You find, you know, uh, over here, two, you know, two rubies, two emeralds, two sapphires. Yeah, yeah. So I'll pick those up and I'll say, let's get moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just have all this loot that's drawn in from other parts of the Citadel, presumably, whether from the Beastmen or, or Explorers or otherwise. So as Herman is going out, he's going to also lay a hand on Somnolentis and say, you fall well, give him a little pat. And as he stands up, the pile of coins is just a little smaller. <laughs> I think about, palm this. about 20 coins. <laughs> Greedy, not too greedy though. Yeah. Wow, man has limits. No, I, I can only carry 100 coins. <laughs> <laughs> ah, mechanical limits. <laughs> so you're in this Cap's the, nest, uh, this horrible on. eastern corner of the Citadel. Perhaps it was used for storage, but it's overwrought, overrun, but it seemed to have cleared it out. Well, uh, let's see, okay. What would you both like to do? I'm wearing these nice robes, and I think that there might be a use for them yet, but uh, I don't know. We've had a difficult journey so far. Any any thoughts? Let's travel a bit more, but if we run into too much trouble, we just back up immediately. I agree with mm-hmm. that sentiment, exactly. So I think pushing up that hallway there, maybe? Yeah. yeah. You're heading straight up? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Grabbing a spix and moving her. And you find a little hook. Uh, as you all travel up here and say your piece with Somnolentus one last time, you notice that there is a, uh, now that you're familiar with it, another secret passageway leading into the chamber to the east. But you could go up and go past it. To the east? Yep, heading heading into the east here. Yep. Let's look back. This is west, right? First. Sorry, yeah, west. Okay. okay. East. Let's look back. I'm sorry, you want to head? Yeah, let's go. Uh, Ms. Big's going to suggest, let's look in the, let's peek in here, see if we can, because, you know, it has a vague sense of where mm-hmm. the places we travel. Let's see if this, like, you know, connects and looks familiar. I through the secret passage? Yeah, through the secret passage. Yeah. And sure enough, you're led to uh, walk through the secret passageway. It's one of those swinging doors, and it, and it silently, like, slides on, on uh, greased wheels almost as, like, a pivot point. In which you just walk in as if you people could pass through this without leaving a trace. Mm-hmm. Well, I recall last time there were some scruffy looking beast men in here. I tried uh, speaking with them, but there was a. Uh, we were in. Uh, anyway. <laughs> do we hear them? Hmm? Like, do we hear signs of these beast men? That... Uh, if you're paying attention to it, yeah, there's definitely some mm-hmm. noises that happen. Yeah, let's go the other way. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> It, but it sounds different. It sound it sounds like someone's like, like talking, co- comforting them. It's up to you too. I think the beast men, frankly, are not the worst of our worries in this place. I agree. So, yeah, I think we should investigate okay. or continue. I, I think we we leave the beast men be. I agree. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Let's continue. So go down the hallway. Heading further up the passageway. Yep. Yeah, sure. And yeah, you can see another hook and another doorway. Oh, no, it's actually up the passageway. What are these circles here? These stars. Well, it depends on where you want to go in there. Well, can we see anything in there? Do we hear anything? Well, you got to go up or go into this? Yeah, so yeah. Go and, well, let's investigate the circle, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yes. Brandon, any, any thoughts? Yeah, no, I'm on board with Sounds good. Yeah, so as you crest around the passageway, you can feel like you're being watched. And as your torchlight breaks the plane, there's a bull statue sitting in the alcove of this room with a giant emerald gem in its forehead. I don't want to touch it. It's not (laughs) onyx. It is not a onyx statue. It is not, no. Is it uh, similar white to my robes? It is I think not. You said the robes were white, right? The, wo- the robes are white. Okay. Can I look for traps related to the statue? Because I think that there was something similar mm. that occurred you, in that you, one over there. Absolutely correct, yeah. yeah. Would, you, would you like to search for traps? Yeah, sure. As you walk forward and you start you know, looking around, 
you notice that like the mechanisms and sort of like the magic that's imbued within it is motion sensor and you just happen to creep up to it without triggering it charging at you and you think it's related to the gem within its forehead if the gem were to be deactivated the trap would not trigger do i have any understanding of how to deactivate it by getting rid of the gem either plucking it smashing it or removing it uh okay and what would plucking it entail is it literally just grabbing it or something it's like a strength check yeah yeah but but motion triggers this thing you already haven't triggered it trying to investigate and now you're in a pickle where if you were to continue moving around this statue it could charge now you're on it you're like in it so you'd be riding the bull down the way (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) but is it can i like use an item like for leverage to try to like help with this yeah, like yeah. Mm-hmm. like use the long sword to try to leverage and like yeah absolutely yeah. okay I'll give then you I want to try on a strength check okay yeah mm-hmm. I want to try it. someone want to give me another d twenty for my advantage yep. uh, double thirteen so fourteen fourteen let's see one two three you pull lock out the gem and you just feel like the weight of some tensed mechanism just to dissipate as the onyx bull just its head just slowly the like non onyx down. bull huh the non onyx bull yeah i'm yeah, sorry <laughs> the non bull the non bull yeah it is the non bull and it's deactivated you deactivated this bull statue yeah when i pluck Whoa. it out and it goes flying i also <laughs> big zero master thief <laughs> and it's just a long passageway which way Let's go this way. Mm, I'd like to clear out the other corner here. Right, that's fine. At least find out what it is. If it's a fight, yeah. I don't want to pick it. Right. Then we're going to go this way first. Then. But these napkins. <laughs> There's so many of them. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Okay. North or south? Uh, as you walk south? down this chamber. Let me I see. like south. Okay. All right, south. Get rid of that napkin. Pluck that napkin. Okay, so as you are faced with a door, that's the door. Can I peep? Is yeah. That, is there a peephole through which to peep? A peephole. There is not. These are heavy stone doors. Mm. <laughs> so I'm just like Can you uh, looking at the stone. Is it, is <laughs> it's it not locked. locked. No, oh, okay. No, no, yeah. Push. Whoa, bold move. Mighty push. <laughs> Team. As you remove this, you are met with the giant face of a bathhouse. And within the center of the far room, there's a woman with snake hair. A statue of a woman with snake hair. (laughs) With her arms uplifted. A nonic statue (laughs) with her arms uplifted. Hmm. I've read some stories in my day, mm-hmm. and women, especially ones with snake hair, can often mean bad news. I'm going to back out. Or can not I look go for in. traps? Are you going in? I want to take a step in, look for traps. Sure. What are you doing? I'm going to come out with L- L- Is that yeah. an R? Okay, he's ready. Yeah, that, that is an R. Okay. And I will hilariously mm-hmm. uh, come to the corner with a arrow knocked. Mm-hmm. Okay. Miss Biggs is searching the room here. It's it's it feels like, and you're getting the sense of this too. This is a part of the ritualistic process as well of cleansing. Oh, something I might have seen in mm-hmm. my Correct. study in the, of the mosaic. Ooh. Yeah. The next mm-hmm. step is here. Yes. Ah, okay. Well, in that case... It's going to take you a little bit of time if you want to search this whole room. Mm-hmm. If you haven't noticed anything so far. Okay, I want to investigate the statue specifically. Yeah, you haven't noticed anything yet? Yeah. All right, I'm going to look at the walls. Are there any murals of any kind? Mosaics? No, no, this is like a purifying, sancti- uh, you know, a sanctifying, purifying room. Is there water in here? Uh, Miss Biggs little clues you in that the arms can pivot if you were to pull them down. Ooh. Perhaps releasing something from the statue's mouth, water. I don't know if I trust that. Mm-hmm. But we can do it if you want. Hmm. All right. So, do I have any more insights about this ritual? I just 
you think if you go through the proper processes of robing, purifying, and uh, you know presenting oneself, you could get a, a blessing from the bull god. Well, I don't know. I saw this in the, the mosaics back there. I mean, I don't know. If you guys want, you can stand back, but I'm going to try this out and see what happens. Miss Biggs is going to stand back. Uh, yeah, I still have my own knowledge. And you also, this statue standing above a giant stone basin as well, too. The middle of the stone basin has a plug, like mm-hmm. it's covering a drain. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, like, you were to step in here and pull the arms down, presumably the mouth of the statue would open. Um... Hilarious doesn't have cure wounds uh, by any chance. Hilarious does not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, this was also once at all. I'm reading from the book and I forgot my own little stash. We'll give this to Miss Big. She's so. Oh, oh, oh. oh. So you found some potions and stuff amongst the goods as well, too. Separate from my my list of readings. Um, Miss Biggs is going to hand you a corroded dagger. Me? Yeah. I, it's, I know it's not the dagger that you had before, but... All burnt and charred? Thanks. <laughs> well, the Edder Crap Dagger. <laughs> Edder crap. crap dagger? Yeah, because it's all corroded. Okay. Is that with T's or D's? Edder. Uh, Edder. T's. T's. T. Okay. It's T, like in letter. Right. Right. <laughs> so what are you doing with this statue? Um, well, seeing the hesitation of my... Here you go, guys. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm getting up on this basin. I'm going to say, hmm, well, maybe next time. Maybe next time. Thinking maybe. about coming back with, uh, you know, maybe coming back with the robe mm-hmm. next uh, time I visit the Citadel and trying this again. So, let's go this way, so. Yeah, so you start traversing up. I met with a uh, door. That is not locked. Okay. Mm. Shall we open the door? Do we hear anything? You don't hear anything whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I'm going through, or, you know, yeah. Yeah, cautiously right. opening, at least. So rather. You're met with, and we'll just for the sake of uniting all the maps here. This room smells of deep copper, like sulfur, mm-hmm. like iron. Mineral. Minerally, yeah. And as you walk in, you get the sense there has been a lot of bloodletting here. In each of the alcoves, there are these giant terracotta bowls that just the stench of blood comes from. And according to the ritual, after purification, one is healed here in the bloodletting room. Uh Aha, very interesting. And the bowls are stamped with a pattern that shows a warrior kneeling in black rain, arms wide and mouth open to the sky. Well, I've um, seen this in the mosaics. Very interesting to know that this is here for next time. And I'm going to go and proceed to the next door. Everybody agree with that? Proceed down this uh, hallway here. Good. You can start moving your way through. You've been through the literal labyrinth of this place, but now the citadel is just opening up all these different chambers and passages that just take you left and right, and every which way. Well, I'd like to get rid of this napkin. Yeah, that's that's what we're doing. Right, Let's get yeah. rid of it. Go ahead, remove that napkin. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Ooh. Okay, so what last of this. You can see within this chamber these pillars that make a fine row, perfect row, all the way down to the end where an altar sits. And there is a sword 
sticking out of the altar. It looks like a longer than the long sword, and but like skinnier at the same time. And um, each of the pillars have different colors. The rows that move from you to the altar, it's red, blue, green, purple. And they like hum with an energy, like there's almost like a force field in between the pillars, protect like that you'd have to pass through. Mm. Oh, so it feels Can like the whole touch room. the first layer. Like yeah, the yeah. Force field. Does it feel like anything? Yeah, it does. It's like Hilarious is going to shoot an arrow down the hallway to see what happens. Sure, yeah. Miss Biggs, as you touch it, you get a sense, a vision of um, the volcano of creation off to the south. You just feel like intense heat, and as the arrow passes through, it like lights on fire, and then douses in water, and then just like flies all the way to the end of the altar and just knocks it against the wall and she clatters to the ground. Ooh. Okay, do I sense anything where it's like that are actual traps? Does this feel like a puzzle? Does it feel like... Do I, do I get any sense of like how you might deactivate these force <clears throat> fields? It, it doesn't seem like they are able to be deactivated, perhaps, from what you can tell. Does it seem you, like from, something I might have seen in the mosaics? According to the ritual, if you were to <clears throat> follow through the processes, those that are purified enough for the, the their bull god can pass through here. Mm. There's also a fallen uh, body. Three ways, three pillars through. These fields mm-hmm. that we've observed, do they run pillar to pillar or wall to wall? They run wall to wall. Wall to wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. The pillars are like against the. Yeah, yes, they run through the pillars against the wall. Oh, okay. If I stick the silver long sword into this first one, does it become hot? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Well, this is very interesting. Uh, I believe that the ritual uh, dictates a, a method to uh, get through here next time. You could also try to run straight through. <laughs> <laughs> By all means. I'm sure you're faster than I am, Beaks. <laughs> so how do we get out of here? Can we see a way? Is there a passage? I can't see really what's there. Is that just a wall? Wait, yeah, how far? Chamber seems Wait, okay, okay. Oh, that connects. Okay. <laughs> the arrow that was shot, uh-huh. it just, like, clanged off a... The back wall where that, where that sword but is sticking out. But it made it Yeah. 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 Like it caught on fire, and then there was, like, a splash of water. If we tie rope to the end of one of these arrows, and then shoot it to the other side, can we try to, like... Stick the arrow. Like I'm just curious. <laughs> is that what you guys do? I would like to try. Let's like, try it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you knock an arrow with a, a rope and you fire it through, and and like as it reaches the other side, you have the arrow, and all of a sudden the rope just burns and severs at the at the burned at the fire at the firewall. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That was good information. Let's move on. All right, so I would like to see what is west. Yeah, it's a long passageway. Fantastic. Let's keep finding out what's down the passageway. And you you guys are, as your torch is just splashing light all the way down, you see the smooth stone craftsmanship. And you just start hearing you hear the rumbling of the a bull statue, a nonex bull statue. Yeah. Make a dexterity check, everyone. Fifteen or higher. Eight. Fifteen or higher. Fourteen. Ten. I <laughs> hope you all die here <laughs> at once. As this statue blows through, piles through, drives through all of you. Oh my god! Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, we can't really spin all our. Dice. Well, well, can we re all the damage? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you want to make a save, someone make a save. You're like, so the bull statue's coming down, it's gonna deal 10. Is that gonna kill everyone at 10 damage? It definitely yeah. killed yeah. me. Oh so God, I'm, that's I'm perfect. Gonna, that's perfect. <laughs> I, I would love for this damage to get rerolled. Okay. Uh, Using the, uh, yeah. So you use it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm using it. Yeah. 
Snake eyes. That is a powerful chorus. As you guys. Okay, you guys had a moment. Elvis had a moment in Arvento, looking at this. At this, Oris has been making its way around, and you see, I. I'm gonna, so, so Nolensis is gonna die. I must go there. There's gonna be a perilous moment where this bull statue, I don't know when or where it's gonna show up, but when we do, I'm gonna push everyone out of the way. And it snicks and, and, and jabs and slices you as it runs to the other side and just smashes into the wall and destroys the green emerald gem on its forehead, exploding. And you saved everyone's life. <sighs> With the power of this Aorus, this, this thing. That's making its way into everyone's psyche of how powerful it is. It's ticking nuclear time bomb is gonna explode when we use it too much, yeah. Oh, what speed, Hilarious. So, is this the exit? Yeah. Okay. This is an exit out of the back, yeah. In, in this hallway, this chamber, you can see the end of it there. Well, anyone wanna keep going or get out of here? Let's go a little further. All right. So y'all took two damage from that <laughs> non expul statue. Jeez. All right. So Scared looking down the hallway. Yep. Yeah, it's a long passageway. Go ahead and clear that out. Keep it going. Oh, oh gosh. We haven't found this, I guess, right? The layers. This is all kind of redundant. Yeah, just to clean it up. Okay, so it's like a door and then another passageway there. Mm -hmm. All right, sure. Yeah. What about this room? There's a little stairwell down there. Yeah, there's a there's a door there, and uh, it's not stuck. Well, companions, this has been a an eventful day. I propose we return to Arventa and. Um, Try to take stock of our situation and maybe establish uh, some next steps. Can we open this door first? Sure. Yeah. I want to open this door. I want to go in. Mm -hmm. It's a big stone door. And you're met with a giant chamber that just echoes with this thrum the citadel and there is a figure there hunched over is wearing a cloak he looks like one of the beast men but as he raises his eyes he looks towards you all and with the greatest of force finally my saviors i can thank you and he's a twisted figure. He's got, you know, hairy legs and his forearms are thick and he's got long claws and his eyes like have that cosmic swirl that just have, have just settled for a second as he, he focuses on each one of you. And he looks to the elf. You, I've seen a spirit that you know pass through here. You don't know me. But I know you, I've seen you, and you two helped my kin. What do you guys do? So this person can speak in common tongue? It's that ye old common, yeah, it sounds like it's from a generation ago. <clears throat> so I'd like to speak in Thanian if it looks like a beast man. Okay, yeah, yeah. Can you understand He immediately this? kneels. Oh. Uh, well, that's flattering, but there's no need for that. Please, stand up. It is of instinct. The language of our command. Of a creature that you vanquished. Would you like to come with us and get out of here? I would. But we live here for far too long. Not forever. We intend to fully liberate this place of all its burdens and beasts, your present company excluded, of course. So you could perhaps uh, join us for a week or so. And once you're feeling well again, return with us to finish the job and make it a, 
a healthy place for you to live. I cannot leave no? until the spirit is vanquished. You talk of spirits. Which spirit needs vanquished? The figure, the blood-skinned one. You have done well. You have killed it. But a proxy lives. The Onyx Bull. Mm. Only he who has killed the Scarlet One can destroy this Onyx statue. We have been here far, far too long. And I know darkness will consume me again. My kin and I have come from across the ocean many moons ago. I have gained a sense of clarity. And I am amazed I live to see the sun again. You have met the cod. <laughs> mm, okay, the cod, cool. Well, Dakad, we won't let you down. We will be back to finish the job. I can promise that. You carry a sword. It is a sword of two parts. One lies at the statue we worshipped. The other lies in a chamber protected by the pillars. The pieces can make the crescent moon whole. It is from a tribe, a camp, a folk deep within the desert. We have given pieces of worship to our dark red-skinned lord. Back when we were voyagers of this land. The long sword comes from a village surrounding a great pyramid in the deserts, north of the volcano of creation. Do you know anything on the shield? There was a shield, my mind recalls, with a tiger. Prowling. Yes. The steel lions, a camp of desert dwellers, live east of the salt stone tower, which is erected in the salt flats south of the dunes. They're known for ambushing their enemies. Should a recovered shield be returned, it would be very noteworthy. These are champions that came here many moons ago, and they were vanquished by our, our former lord. I struggle with saying that. The Blood One did terrible things to us, but we have been saved and lifted from the darkness. These items were from these folk. They seek to learn the power of the ones that were here, power that we have searched for. But with every day, we have become more and more corrupted. The power was great. He starts taking his hands, and like little clouds just form, like literal clouds. And the power to do anything, rain starts falling from the clouds. They could make anything. He's like gesturing to like the building around it from their thoughts with their power. That is why they come to this land. But the one-eyed ones did not want to share with those that were not worthy. Uh, well, uh, I didn't follow any of that. <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you. Dakad, <clears throat> for your time. Dakad, a moment before we go. And speaking of spirits, you mentioned the spirit of my companion, Somnolentus. Could you indicate to what that spirit was drawn? To the west, here within the citadel, lies a pool of water. One in which venerated warriors have been drawn to for countless generations. That is why I noticed you in your spirit. 
Thank you, gracious one. I am not gracious. I am tortured. What do you guys do? I believe. Yeah. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I feel like this is a good time for us to get some R and R and yeah. recover our strength. Did you guys, I slowly slip away. You just let the darkness consume him. He's, he's lived like this for generations, and he has had a moments above water, metaphorically speaking, and. He's shared a lot with you in, this, in these moments as if it's been bottled up for ages. What do you guys want to do? You start slipping away back into the Citadel knowing the Cod lives amongst the, uh, the, the ruins here. We'll find you again. Yeah, do you guys want to keep looking or leap? I'm good to leave. Let's mm -hmm. go back to the, to the town. To our mental, yeah. And reset. Yep. Yeah. Heading back to Arventa, you can see there's some activity going on. You know, there's um, milling about. It's sort of like the end of the long day as people have done their work in order to scratch out, eke out a little bit of a life, doing the, the crops and what meager fishing exists. But it's it's literally like day by day. You know, check to, hand to mouth, so to speak. People are on the the bas uh, the bastion of death every day, and every time. Crawlers like yourself return with what little treasure, metaphorical treasure, they 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 rejoice in the fact that their settlement is uh, growing and they have the resources to work with. Now, obviously, gold and gems, sure, but it's it's a matter of bringing back knowledge, bringing back you know raw lumber and materials, and you can imagine some of this stuff is translated into seeds and tools and you know the the basics of establishing a greater foothold here. What do you guys want to do? So, uh, Herman is going to deposit some money into his bank account. Because the, the, um, so I don't know if you guys both know or where we are. But anyway, so at this, uh, at our, in Arventa, there's a central encampment where the, the circle has kind of established a foothold with, um, you know, some like little simple palisade around it. And, at the center, there's kind of an old ruin of the previous civilization that goes down into the ground. So that's kind of a convenient place for a vault. Uh, so Herman's posted a couple of guards that he's just kind of hired uh, to just stand there. And, you know, we uh, at some point had kept the Oris in there, whatever, but, you know, Herman personally keeps his gold and valuables in there. It is open to the public in uh, terms of if someone wants to claim, you know, a shelf as their 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 space, they can kind of store stuff there. Um, and depending on how much stuff gets in there, perhaps the circle would uh, want something in return. But you know, maybe not, depending on how things go. But anyway, so that's the the encampment, uh, and there's the the so-called bank. Interesting. Uh, within. Arventa, is there a place where Hilarius could look to trade the pearls? Yes, absolutely, yeah, yeah. What do you, just for gold? For gold, yeah. Yeah, you can get the gold, we'll just straight, straight commerce on that, yeah. All right. Uh, everything is doubled if you're gonna purchase things, right, cost-wise, but you can get, yeah, you'll, how many pearls do you have? Two? Uh, two, yeah, here, 40 gold each. Forty gold each. Mm -hmm. okay, so. What about the gems? Uh, they're ten gold each. Okay, so then I have seven gems. So I'm gonna replace those for seventy gold. Sure. Yeah. Same. So yeah, that whole <clears throat> bank conversation could be a way to store all your gold as well too, so you're not lugging around. Same for a lot of your goods. Anybody want to carouse? We just came back from a successful mission. Well, how about this gold chain? Does mm -hmm. that look like it would have any purpose beyond val like just monetary value? Other than looking dope, like no. Nice grip. Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe maybe Herman's gonna like just stash that in there as like stored value. Maybe for, you know, some kind of special event if sure. there were to that's, be certain ceremonies. Yeah. Right. So it's in the safe. In the safe. Golden mm -hmm. chain, baby. Alright. What does Electrum do? 
It has some Electra lying around. Yeah, it's a gold, it's a coin value, but it's like old cold coin value. Oh, really? It doesn't have an actual It does. It, 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 back in the mainland, it's not used anymore. So seeing it out here, it's like, whoa, how old is this place? Oh, OK. It's so like a $2 it, bill. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That's a great okay. yeah, that's a great comparison. It doesn't have an elemental uh, ability. No, no, no. Oh, OK. It sounds like it should, though. Yeah. So maybe we'll discover. One. It's like from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an alley of gold and silver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's like a $1 coin. Right, right. Yeah. Second joy is. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are in Arventa and you get that sense that they're grateful for this uh, exploration of the Citadel. You know, it seems like this thorn in Herman's side has yet to be plucked as, as parts of it remain unsearched. Mm -hmm. And undefeated. Undefeated. You're learning more and more about these strange lands that inhabitants have come to explore aeons ago. These strange beast creatures seem to have come from across the ocean long ago, and they bear a symbol that Herman recognizes. I don't have it ready. Um, I was gonna say, do we have like comprehensive notes, or maybe we could even make it directly on the map of like certain things that haven't been resolved? Uh, Alex, what do you think? Of what? So, like, I think we didn't take the alabaster statue, right? That might be nice to grab next time. Mm -hmm. Which one's the alabaster yeah. statue? That was in the little hole over there, yeah, the right. ivy hole, with some random gems. We had that. We had the cleansing room. And right. So I think I took the here. random gems. Yeah, this one. Oh, you did? You took them all? OK. So yeah, we still did. have the statue, correct? Unclaimed. Yeah, there's still, like, loot in there. Whatever, whatever you took is whatever you took. Yeah, so I think, all right, I think there's still the statue. I'm hooked on the statue because I think it would be nice to have, like, a little... Keep you know, a little town square, maybe, like a little... How big is the statue? Which statue well, are you talking about? Well, it could be, about? like, on a little pillar, I don't know. There's an alabaster statue that you mentioned. Yeah, I'll say it's, like, a cat size. Yeah, so it could be, like, on a little pillar or something. Sure, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Why not uh, just pick it up? Huh? Why don't you didn't have the slots for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. why did you say something? I could have picked up. We're going to go back. We're going to go back. Okay. It's fine. I'm just trying to remember like what's there. Or could we just say that we grabbed it? I mean, I don't know. If you had the slots, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah if you yeah, had yeah. the slots for it, yeah. All right. All right. And you want it? I'll uh, give it to you. I was thinking like, oh, oh did, Biggs, did you grab that statue I yeah, saw? Yeah, right here. Oh, good. why don't we make a little monument to our fallen... Is it a cat? What is this thing? Uh, no, it's the size it. of a cat. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, what am I looking at here? Oh, is it a, perhaps a, uh, a humanoid? Of a bull. A shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, do we have any craftsmen in this town? <laughs> you want to craft it into something? Yeah, we want to craft it into a humanoid figure. A cat? No, what? A cat? <laughs> Are you I'm, trying, a cat? <laughs> I'm trying to honor our fallen comrades. Right, yeah. I guess it Some would be up to cats. your faction, perhaps. Well, that's not the only comrade. Oh. We've lost other comrades is this true? previously. This is true. Although, have is they all been true? from your faction? Not all. Not no. True. No. Uh, in, in Arventa, yeah, I think this is the, the first fallen. Well. Because out, out back in the mainland at the Broken oh, Bridge, that was, that was at the back tavern. Yeah, that was at the mm -hmm. tavern of the Broken Bridge. Right, right, right. Broken right. Bridge Tavern, which was yeah. different. Well, we shall not speak its name. Right. Of the, <laughs> the horrors uh, that took place. Okay, the so. The Burning Bridge Tavern. Right, right, yeah. right. So, all right, so yes, I guess indeed. So what would you like this statue to be refashioned into? Yeah, you know, let's make it the, the palm tree of peace. Oh. Ah, a palm tree of peace. All right, so yeah, you, Parekios can handle that. He's going to oh. do his best. Parekios, the old man that, that greets everyone on every turn. My friends, I will carve this stuff. Oh. Parekios, you honor us. And if you could... Oh, well, what happened? You were a dwarf when you left and <laughs> came back an elf. Oh, <laughs> so nice to meet you. Yes, I've seen you around. I greet everyone at the uh, at the Arventa. Yeah, it rings a bell. Mm, I, I will find someone to sculpt this statue. Oh, yeah. Get us a pillar for heart. it as well. And a pillar. A nice pillar to put it on. A pillar. Put it in the center of the town or something. You have the thanks of the Volpe Sergeant. I will. I will find someone. I know. My heart goes out to you all, adventurers. I am brave to come here, but 
to see you all go into that Citadel day in, day out. But I know Arventa will benefit from having this bastion. We need a grand town hall. Something that will allow people a place to conduct business, a place to claim as our own. And this citadel is filled with what you tell me, dark forces, dark terrors deep within the lands. And I feel it. Since last time, the statue, the, the onyx god, or the bull statue that you told me about, still looms over this whole citadel. So you were the uh, character, Dakad, mm-hmm. mentioned that the one who killed the bull has to be there. Does that mean the group or, or the, the actual one? <laughs> yeah, with uh, Galavan and specifically with the spear. Ah, Ooh. okay. Okay. That's good to know. Well, we're just gonna keep coming back at this thing. Herman is Herman is pissed off at this fucking place. I, that's at least what he wants to do. Um, All right, carousing. Do we want to carouse? And what are our carousing costs? Uh, you can you can choose to carouse, depending on how much money you want to put in. Uh, let's see. Okay, right there. Uh, let's see, what's the uh, the minimum carousing? I think it's 30. Is it 30? Yeah. You could do 100. Um, Between the three of us. Look, I mean, Herman's got money, but like, not that much. <laughs> well, not each of us do 100. I no, mean, together, I know, but I know. But. Uh, you could just fun. carouse. He's just give you a bonus to the roll. Well, 30 is, is no bonus. So yeah, carousing is a minimum of 30. Shakes, right? mm-hmm. um, How much do you want to put in? Uh, I mean, the, yeah, Larry's... Larry's... his name. If we, I mean, if we each put in 10, we can have a night of carousing and honor and spin our tales. fallen friends. Fallen dwarf friend. I'd like to save up a little bit for some reason. I mean, if... You... If you're willing to put in, you know, like 20, 25, then Miss Biggs can cover the rest for the 100. You can take on the lion's share. I mean, it's, it's your call. I mean, if, if, we, if we will go for the big night out, then I can contribute a little bit more here, so. Okay. Uh, Herman can do, uh, how about 32? Okay. What do you got? I'll do 35. Okay, and then I'll do whatever the rest is. You going for that 100, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'll do 33. No, that's not right. No, that is right, 33. Nice. Worked out. Going so big. what do we do? We uh, roll. You're gonna roll a d8, uh, and you're gonna add one to it. D8 plus one. Okay, Each come on, us. baby. Yep. Oh. Ooh, this is what I got fucking last time. Nice. I got Nine. three. For so I got Solarness. Nine. Mm-hmm. Nice. Four. Well, we'll start with the low four. one. Yeah. You guys got four. You both hazily remember donating 10% of your total, total wealth to a glib priest. God Again. Damn it. It's a glib priest. You gain three XP and a priest ally. Total wealth. So, what is that? Yeah, what is my total wealth? Uh, what's your gold and everything so far? At least do that. Can I choose not to take the plus one? <laughs> Cash. <laughs> no. <laughs> you chose it. You put the cash in. All right. Um, I have 185 gold pieces and three silver pieces. 185? Yeah. So 20 gold. Okay. Yeah, mine's like 16, 17, 17. There's a glib priest out there just making bank off of you. <laughs> you well, the last one was Galavan, remember? So sure. I gave my money to Galavan, and mm-hmm. I gained him as an ally. Which mm-hmm. we said would give us some yeah, yeah, yeah. indeterminate mm-hmm. boost. Mm-hmm. So now what? Do, do we do we both get like a, a 
really buff priest ally, or do we get two like? How about this? Allies? We will. You get those uh, two of those healing potions. We get two healing potions. The, the, that, that healing potion, that uh, the magic item that I have over here. You guys get two more of those healing potions. Okay, so we each Wait, get we one? have healing potions. <laughs> no, I, I got, got one, one healing potion. Oh, you do? Yeah. So we each get two. Uh, no, you each get one. They get two yeah. healing potions yeah, total. So this, this priest on the go, if you will. Priest on the go. All right. Well, I guess that's worth 16 gold. Probably very Whatever much so. Yeah. Worth. And, um, yes, you seem to be wandering around houses of faith in your time of need during your, your stupor state. Maybe you and Miss Biggs stumbling about Arventa after relishing deeply in, in your, your travels and tales and have come across this priest. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do this just for the fun of it. Let's let's do one of these. I'm gonna witness some magic right here. Whoa. Witness some magic as this guy comes to light. You need a D20? I can't believe we're gonna D20, sir. I don't like that one. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. It's tough to read. This is good, ready. Okay. Two, seven, ten, ten. Van two seven, Van two seven win, Van win. The priest is named Van win. Ten ten. No, just Van win. Van win the priest. You guys have dealt with Van win the priest. You were referred were referred to Van win in, in your drunken stupor, probably by some of the two fourteen, who were a bit occupied tonight, and this priest just recognizes both your needs as somebody who just has suffered greatly in your adventures and your exploits and just tries to curb you on your way, tries to show you a little bit of how a little bit of faith can send you in the right direction. And perhaps you guys are struggling very, very deeply with your own conf confrontations of the Scarlet Minotaur. W-I-N? Okay. Mm -hmm. Van Wyn. Something to think about okay. for you guys. Now let's uh, go ahead to our buddy over here who rolled a nine. Ooh, that's what you got last time. Okay. So talent or trickery. So we're going to roll evens odds. Oh, well, you're going to go straight. I'm going percentile. percentile. Nice. I never get to nice. roll percentile dice. It makes me very happy. 58. So Right on the edge. So, so trickery. 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 You will gain and. You said it last time. Through trickery, you would gain an enemy, but I, I'd still like to roll it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, roll it. One more. Uh, one. One? <laughs> you gain an ally. An ally whose name is... 884. Briog. 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 So through trickery, what, what's, what, what sort of trickery does El Elarius do? What's kind of, what, what kind of trickery is this person? Elarius, while not particularly dexterous, does know a couple of sleight of hand tricks. And that is the trickery that causes some laughter, some good times on this night of revelry, which Briog takes favorably to. Briog is enchanted by our trickery, pulling off daggers and spinning it around. Where did you learn such things? It seems like someone of your stature would not have these tricks of skill and, and and performance like this. You seem built for war. Back in my time in the legions, I was a scout. I had the fortunate honor of serving with many far more skilled than I. The war rages on back home, and I have been lucky enough not to see any of it. In fact, I've dodged my own nation's draft on the front lines. I've come here looking for a better life, an easier life than war raging back home. I 
can't believe a warrior such as yourself would leave the front lines to come here. I was never much on the front lines. I preferred to keep my distance. Like me? I think we will work well together. I will keep an eye out for you if you do the same for me, my friend. I will keep an eye to the skies and an ear to the ground. Briag is wrapped in sort of like a like a like a red velvet cloak, but underneath they have like no armor, no like they're almost like bare chested, and they just have to like carry themselves with such like elegance or such like I'm above all of this. But seeing your tricks and seeing your performance, they're like taken down a peg. They like totally respect that and just appreciate it. We'll say this takes place in the Onyx Ballroom, I guess, and the, the, the Revelry Hall. Okay, so you got five experiences for points for that. I feel like we're rounding out our session here tonight. Does that sound about right with you guys? Yeah. Okay, so here's all the things you managed to uncover today. This is for you as well. Okay. You can, you can work that out now or later, but these are the big ones. So you guys get, we'll say, three experience points for these, this chunk here. And you can pass them out and use them as you see they're freely. Just... They're, they're stuff that we've, we've, we've talked about. You can read them over. Sometimes it's nice to reinforce it or talk to, amongst yourselves. Oh, oh, it's a group thing. Yeah, everyone's got them. You guys can trade them off. What do you got? We read them out loud. Um, so, go ahead. Yeah. The silver longsword with the crescent moon hill comes from a venerated village surrounding a great pyramid in the deserts north of the volcano of creation. Mm -hmm. So, hold on. Say that again. The, the last part. Long, okay. Where, about the location. Exactly. Surrounding a great <laughs> exactly. pyramid in the deserts north of the volcano of creation. North. Okay, so pyramid north of the volcano. All right, I'm going to say it's somewhere over here. I thought you only used circles. Oh, this is a pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that square is yours. Nope. Yeah, because you learned about a castle. No, no, no. I would never draw a square. Oh, okay. Anyway, I'm drawing a pyramid. Okay. Uh, I'll go next. The Onyx Minotaur is a vessel for the spirit of the Scarlet Minotaur. It can only be destroyed by the one who slew the Scarlet Minotaur with a vigilant spear. Right. Oh, wow. We knew that. Uh, was there another one over there? I guess I can yeah. read mine, but... Decad of the recovered... of the recovered zealous vision voyagers gains a temporary sense of time and place. Nothing is as it was, but here are what could be, and he feels a growing darkness with him, within himself and his kin. Probably gonna need to read that one. But anyway... <laughs> I agree. The mithril shield with the prowling tiger, so I guess that's the shield you got last mm -hmm. time, belongs to the steel lions. Right, so the Steel Lions are a camp of desert dwellers. Why aren't they the Steel Tigers? Why didn't they put a lion on the shield? Why is it a prowling tiger, <laughs> tiger on the shield of the Steel Lions? Uh, it beats the hell out of me. <laughs> uh, maybe they all have different cat shields. Yeah, maybe. Oh, they're a camp of desert dwellers who live east of the Saltstone Tower, mm. which is in the Salt Flats, south of the dunes. All right, so this is in the desert, east of the tower, south of the dunes. They ambush their enemies. Recovering a missing shield would be very. Oh, must have got cut off. <laughs> <laughs> very what? Very, <laughs> very, <laughs> very interesting. interesting. Don't worthy. Wow, oh, very uh -huh. good. Okay. Yeah, sorry, there was another map because there was mountains here and dunes here. Okay, so there's dunes over here? Yep. Mm -hmm. South of the fortress? South of the dunes. The, the fortress is south of the dunes. No. The dunes are south of the fortress? Yep. That's okay, that's what I said. Yeah. Alright, so doo -doo 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 -doo. these are dunes. And then uh, the saltstone tower is south of the dunes. So there's salt flats south of the dunes. Mm -hmm. right. Do they cover the entire space of the dunes? Do we know? South of the dunes, presumably. Okay. So then there's salt flats. Uh, salt flats. And then there is a tower. Do we know kind of how far east or west? It's right in the middle of the salt flats. Right in the middle? All right, so there's a tower. Salt stone tower. 
and then east of that live the um, the uh, the steel lions. Mm -hmm. All right, so steel lions. All right, we'll just say they live over here somewhere. I love that the mapping mini game is back to the table. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys want to consult this increasingly <laughs> complex map, which Sounds I think good. we might need to get some uh, more solid like writing on. Is it's getting kind of hard to read the scribbles. Is that a toucan? <laughs> Where? <laughs> <laughs> it's got a big old, big old, big old feathers. Yeah, it's getting a little rough here. But so anyway, we've uh, figured out a lot of stuff here. Ooh. All right. All right. So, and I also found out about the crown. Is related to these so-called zealous vi vision voyagers as well. That's what this is. Okay. So mm. that's also the Duke's crest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. How did I find out the name Zealous Vision Voyagers? Because I've known of the Duke mm -hmm. previously. Mm -hmm. So how did I come to learn? How did her? They're no back at the mainland as whatever you tell us. But here they're completely different. Oh, so the the what's it? Dakad. Dakad mentioned the Zealous Vision Voyagers. Uh, yes, and, just kind of and, and yeah, and, and also like you found the crown. You've seen this coat of arms on tabards. You've seen the crown has a symbol as well too. And this this zealous vision voyagers have been a operative term, but back in the mainland they're known as. Well, it's uh, oh okay, so that's what this means. Yep. Oh, all right. I didn't understand the wording. So all right. So on the mainland. Do either of you recognize that crest? No? Uh, maybe. Yeah, you need to brush up on your great houses. This is the crest of House Gravier. Uh, and I have to admit that I've had dealings with him since I came here. <laughs> He's the one bankrolling the circle. I see. In fact, he's the reason I'm stuck here. Yeah. Gladly with all of you, but stuck nonetheless. And I have to admit, I was very shocked the first time I came across his crest in the uh, in the citadel, meaning that he probably did not send me here just for fame and fortune and power, which I assumed were his motives. But clearly, he has a deeper connection to this place. So we have to figure out what's going on with these zealous vision voyagers as soon as possible. Okay. That will, I think, clear up lots of mysteries. So you gained three experience plus whatever you rolled for carousing for all that. You got five, I think, and you guys yeah, got, so got well, three. So I got six total. Six total. I think that pushes someone over the edge. Oh no, that so was how many? Been, Three plus what well, you rolled threes, which is six, I guess, right? Yeah. Any uh, any justifications for all of this stuff? I would say Herman definitely doing some uh, knowledge gathering of the Citadel, learning about this ritual, especially, mm -hmm. um, has gained a lot of experience and is also feeling pretty good despite the loss of a companion that we did manage to actually figure out basically what we need to do with this citadel, with the ritual, how to kill the Onyx uh, bull. Finally, now that we know we need Galavan with us to do it. So I would say I could even justify two extra experience points for Herman this time. What, but the ritual, yeah. Are you going to go about it? How do you feel about this uh, act of engagement with the bull god? You're well, learning about it, but you shied away from, from multiple instances of... Uh, of this time, right? this time okay. yeah, because, you know, sitting here with my 5 XP did not feel like the... or HP, I mean, right, right, did not yeah. seem like the moment to do it. But coming in, you know, double-barreled, ready to go, uh, next time... You know, who knows what kind of damage, but if we got a priest, if we got whoever with us, we're not getting in fights, we're just doing the ritual. Herman's intrigued, especially now learning more about these vision voyagers mm. uh, and how zealous they are. Mm. 
So, indeed, I'll think about it. You guys got any cases? Miss amount of XP, I would say. Um, yeah, I mean, Miss Biggs, I mean, okay, well, actually, no, these are in reference to the long sword and the, and the shield, like... And the, the sword, you notice, yeah, yeah, yeah. can be slipped, like, something could slide into, into the hilt. Yeah. Presumably that larger greatsword. Yeah. So, I think, yeah, Miss Biggs spent most of the session doing things that she's good at, right? Like, disarming traps, shooting header caps, and, like... Yeah, I, I mean, other than other than you know stuff like that, I can't. No, no, nothing mm -hmm. really jumps to mind. I think you guys got some good. I'll give you an extra experience point one point. Are you, try, are you trying to level? You're on a threshold of level by two points. Then no, you get one. <laughs> trying to milk it because otherwise you have some experience for this built into this into the the secrets and clues that you've gotten. Mm. But I hear you. You're delving into the ritual of the the Scarlet Minotaur. It's, I'm curious to see if Herman actually takes it upon himself to follow the process. And I'd be curious to see if, if you were to introduce it to anyone else, namely Galavan, who's had his own interactions with this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts? Am I the first player to roll percentile dice at the table? <laughs> <laughs> no, we did that last time with that, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so you gotta get what you want to experience like that? <laughs> okay, that's... Well, hang on, hang on, I'll make a case. Okay. Wow. Oh. You saved our lives thanks to your... Uh, premonition yeah. in the That's hallway, true. turning it from complete disaster <laughs> into, <laughs> frankly, a uh, pretty good success. So I'd say that's worth at least one XP. Double fives to double ones, snake eyes. Mm -hmm. And some did sacrifice himself for his bills. I'd say yeah. <laughs> first player to roll up a new Mr. Mid-Sesh. Mid <laughs> I'll give you an extra experience two, point for that. Two, snake two? Eyes. One and one. I'm good for two. You want to give him two? Yeah. Give of course you two. do. <laughs> give him two. What do you mean, of course I do? <laughs> well, you know, the players are our, like, yeah. Yeah, you get two experience points. Yeah, I'll, right. I'll give you two. Thank you all. Yeah, you, you were clutch coming Thank in you. around the corner, finishing Thank out with you. arrows, and True. the use of the Oris, which has gained, I believe, three U extra uses on top of all this. Big use last get time. Get this away from me. It's hot. Thanks for watching this chapter of our ongoing fable. Drop a like if you enjoyed the episode and let us know in the comments which stories interest you most. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And to stay connected, there are links to our Discord and socials in the description. We want to invite you to the next episode of Tables and Fables, and we'll be sure to save you a seat.